What's a revolving credit? Let's go. We're going to go through four things today. First of all, what's a revolving credit? How to actually use one? We're going to go through the pros and cons, and we're also going to go through the seven ways to use a revolving credit. Now, make sure you stick around because number four will genuinely surprise you. Let's rip into what a revolving credit actually is. Now, let's say you've got a 500k mortgage. You can break off a portion of that, say 25k, and set it up as a revolving credit. Now, this basically works like a giant overdraft that's already maxed out. So let's take that 25k that we just talked about. That's your limit. But like an overdraft, you can put money into that revolving credit and then you are only charged interest on the balance. Now, the more money you put in, the less interest you are actually going to pay. But like an overdraft, you can also take that money back out What's the catch? You'll just end up paying more interest. In this case, if it's a 6% interest rate, 25K worth of debt, $125 a month is what it's gonna cost you. Now, if you were to log into your banking app, here's what it would kind of look like. In this case, we've got somebody with a $50,000 revolving credit. They've put 5K in there, so they are charged on the balance. $45,000. But what's important to note are revolving credits are not an only child. They've got a sister called the offset mortgage. Now it's genetically similar, but also slightly different. Here's how it works. When you have offsets, you have two accounts. You've got a flexible mortgage account, and then you've got the offset account. So your flexible mortgage has all of the debt, in this case, $25,000, and then the offset is where you put any of your extra cash, in this case, 15K. Now this is cool because you only then pay interest on the balance. In this case, $10,000, and assuming a 6% interest rate, $50 a month is what it's gonna cost you. Now it's worth mentioning both because not every bank offers both. In fact, most banks offer one or the other. Some will offer revolving credits, some will offer offset accounts. Now look, in principle, they are very, very similar, but it's worth mentioning so when you go into the bank, you know what you're getting. Now let's talk about how do you actually use a revolving credit as part of your mortgage strategy. Now this is where we're gonna talk about the mortgage buster strategy, which is a way of paying down your personal home mortgage much more aggressively. So let's say you've got 500K worth of debt. You might set up $450,000 as your main mortgage, standard table loan that you pay off over, say, 30 years, but then you might have a $50,000 revolving credit. Now, what's the strategy? Make minimum repayments against your main mortgage and then as much as you can afford into that revolving credit. Now, why would I do it this way? Three reasons. First of all, it gives you a goal to aim for. If you set up that 50K revolving credit, your goal is to pay 50K in there and you're gonna be able to do that much more quickly than paying back a 500K mortgage. So it gives you a goal to aim for, means you can make progress. The second reason is your repayments aren't locked in. So let's say you're really aggressively putting money into that revolving credit and you actually over save and you need some of that back, hey, you can just take it out, it's a revolving credit. Whereas if you were to up your main payments to your mortgage, well, if you want to decrease the size of those repayments or take some of those voluntary contributions back, got to go through a whole mortgage application again. And number three is it can help some investors borrow more, and that's because those additional repayments you're making, they're voluntary. They're not locked in. They're not committed. And actually, I do this myself. I've got a $30,000 offset account with Westpac, and whenever I go out to town with people, I always say, I don't want to spend too much because I've got to put money into my revolving credit, and they all laugh at me and say, okay, we'll shout the next round of drinks. Let's go through now the pros and cons of revolving credits because it's not all rosy. Now, the pros are you can take that money back out if you oversave into your revolving credit. It's what we say in finance, it's liquid. I'll give you an example. I recently had my car break down and there was gonna be $6,000 of repairs. Now, I'd been making a lot of contributions voluntarily into my revolving credit. And I knew that if I needed to take the money back out and pay for those car repairs, hey, I've got the money sitting there, it's not gonna to be too tough for me. The second thing is it gives you the flexibility to make payments when you want. So let's say that you are paid on a lump sum basis, maybe you're a business owner, maybe you're a freelancer. Well, when you get large amounts of cash in because somebody's paid their bill, you can take that, you can put that into your revolving credit. 
Now, what are the cons though? Well, you're often gonna pay a higher interest rate. And the reason behind that is it is a floating interest rate when you use a revolving credit or an offset. And the floating rate tends to be higher than the fixed rate. And of course, because of that, the interest rate can change at any time. And so your interest repayments are also gonna change at any time. And the third thing that's important to note as a con, you need to be okay with money. And the reason behind that is where people mess up and fail when they use revolving credits is they save a bit in there and then they just go ahead and spend, spend, spend because the money's available, they can take it out. Now let's wrap up the video by going through seven more ways to use a revolving credit and I promise you number four will surprise you. Number one is if you're doing renovations. So let's say you're gonna spend $50,000 renovating your own home. Well, rather than just taking that out as a top up on your mortgage and paying interest on the whole balance straight away, you might set that up as a revolving credit. Then as you get bills from the builder, you spend the money, but you're only being charged interest on what you've actually spent. Number two is if you're buying a new build investment property. Now the standard strategy here, even if you're only gonna pay a 10% deposit up to the builder straight away, is to set up a revolving credit against your own house for the full 20% deposit you're going to need. Now that means that once construction of that new build is finished over say a 12 month period, the rest of the deposit is still there. Number three, is to help with your property investment cash flow. Now, when you model out your investment property's cash flow, you might say, I need to put in $100 a week. But bills don't come in evenly over a 52 week year. So you might use a revolving credit to help cover some of that cash flow over time. Number four, and this is the surprising one, is in case you get made redundant. So we had an investor here at Opus Partners who gave us a call and said, hey, I need to sell my investment property. I need to put $50 a week to top up that property, but I can't afford to do that anymore because I just got made redundant. Well, in that case, that investor had forgot that they already had set up a $50,000 revolving credit. Now they could use that available cash, they could use that available credit in order to finance the cash flow of their investment property and any personal expenses. The key here though was they already had it. It's important to note that if you call up and say to the bank, I've just lost my job, they're not going to be approving you for another revolving credit. You need to have it set up in advance. Number five is if you have cash sitting around in the bank. So let's say you're planning a trip off to the Cook Islands and you're sailing hard to take your family over there. Well, you can use some of that within an offset account to pay less interest on your mortgage in the meantime while you've got that cash sitting there. Number six, we've touched on this, if you're a freelancer or have uneven income, maybe because you own your own business. Well, what does that mean? Well, as your invoices are paid, you can take that money, put it in the revolving credit or offset, save some interest, and then if you need to take some of it out, hey, you can. And the last one is if you want to make a large purchase. Let's say you're off now and you're gonna go car shopping. Well, you might set up that revolving credit so the money's there, why would you do that? Well, because the interest rate you pay on a mortgage, even if it's a floating mortgage, is going to be lower than if you were to get a personal loan from a finance company, for instance. You might pay 6% on the mortgage floating interest rate, perhaps 11% or 12% if you were to finance it through a personal loan. Now, you might be thinking, how do I actually get a revolving credit? There are two ways. You can either go to your bank directly or, and I'd recommend this, use a mortgage advisor to help structure it the right way and figure out, well, how big should this revolving credit actually be? Now, if you're looking for a recommendation, we always recommend Catalyst Financial. They're our sister company here at Opus and they are fantastic. They share an office with us and they're just amazing. Now, what I wanna know is what is your favorite way to use a revolving credit? Let me know down in the comments section below and while you're down there, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and why don't you toggle that little bell so you get notified about all our future videos.